Hello and welcome to Rio's Positive POV. This is part four or five of me showing you my entire complete Blu-ray collection. The first movie is Phantom Fred, which stars Daniel Day-Lewis in his final ever on-screen performance. I have an inkling that he will return someday to act, but this is at the moment his final performance. Movies directed by Paul Thomas Anderson and it's just a fantastic movie. Um, one of the best that came out in that year. The next movie we have is Project X. This is a found footage movie. It is a very racy movie. It's all about this party, this young American bunch of kids ended up having this sick, insane house party. And this movie is all about that. The next movie we have is Rounders. I am a huge fan of the poker game and Rounders is the best movie about poker. Features Matt Damon and Edward Norton. So if you haven't seen that one, please check it out. Next we have Room, which stars Brie Larson. Brie is absolutely fantastic in this performance and Jacob Tremblay and I believe his debut is just phenomenal. That geezer, that geezer, he's a kid really, but that kid is going to be a phenomenal actor. The next movie we have, or should I say collection of movies we have, is in fact the Resident Evil collection. These movies are one of my guilty pleasure series for sure. The first movie is awesome. I don't care what anybody says. Um, from there, it pretty much goes downhill. However, I still enjoy the Resident Evil movies. Very fun indeed. And I'm looking forward to seeing the um, reboot that should be coming out some point this year. So looking forward to that one. Next, we have Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One. I am a massive fan of this movie. It is just one big pop culture reference and it is fantastic. They brought out Ready Player Two, the book, uh, which further um, pushes the story along. So I hope they turn that into a movie too. I know that movie Ready Player One gets a bit of hate, but I don't really understand why because I think it's a fantastic movie. Next we have the Rocky film series. I am a massive fan of the Rocky film series. Numbers one to four are just absolutely outstanding. My favorite moment from the Rocky series though, however, comes from Rocky Balboa. Um, that scene when he's talking to his son is very inspirational indeed and is one of my favorite movie scenes of all time. Um, when it comes to the ranking of the Rocky movies, for me, it's probably number four at one, uh, Rocky the original at two, Rocky three, Rocky two, um, Rocky Balboa, and then Rocky five. The Creed movies is a completely different, different situation for sure. Next, we have Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window. This is an extremely, extremely well-made movie featuring James Stewart and Grace Kelly. Grace Kelly is just a 10 out of 10. What an unbelievable creature. Unbelievable. Um, I'm through, through, I'm going through a big Hitchcock phase at the moment. Rewatched all of his movies that I have in my collection and I'm now going through trying to watch all 53 of his movies. So let's see how I get on doing that. <clears throat> the next movie is described as Goodfellas coming to Essex. It is Rise of the Foot Soldier, all about Carton Leach and the Essex uh, boys. This is a fantastic British movie. Next we have Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. This was my favorite Tarantino movie for a long while. Uh, Pulp Fiction is my current favorite. But it does change from time to time. Um, I really love this movie. It's so well made. It is an eye opener to me in regards to how certain scenes can be in a movie. Not be plot focused. But can drive the story forward. 
um, real character building from the first scene. And it also features my favorite movie scene of all time where Michael Madsen's um, dancing around just stuck in the middle of you and at the same time cutting off a policeman's ear. The next movie we have is Raging Bull. Raging Bull is a Martin Scorsese movie which stars Robert De Niro. When I discuss and am debating the best actor of all time, this is a movie for Robert De Niro that I have to put in as one of his best and one that makes me think of him such higher as an actor. His performance as Jake LaMotta in this is amazing. Talking of amazing performances, Daniel Brawl in Rush is absolutely fantastic as Nicky Lauder and Chris Hemsworth is really good as James Hunt. Just found out that Chris Hemsworth is going to be in the new Mad Max movie. Can't wait him, can't wait him, can't wait to see him flex that Australian accent a bit, for sure. Next we have the Leonardo DiCaprio, Romeo and Juliet and Claire Danes. Claire Danes, Jesus Christ. I even forgot she was in this movie. She pops up all the time in various stuff, Claire. I um, mean, she is a fantastic actor. I love this movie. I'm a big fan. I know some people are not, but who cares? Next, we have Rock and Roller. Rock and Roller is a Guy Ritchie movie. And the only problem I have with Rock and Roller is that they told me I was going to be getting the real Rock and Roller, the sequel, and it's just never come out. So that's very disappointing. Next we have Hugh Jackman in Real Still. The other day they said they're going to make a rock and soccer movie. This is basically Real Still. Next we have Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the first movie in the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the new trilogy. What a absolute beast series. Next, we have Raising Arizona, starring Nicolas Cage by the Coen Brothers. Also stars Holly Hunter. If you're not aware of Holly Hunter is, she voices Mrs. Incredible in The Incredibles. Next, we have Rain Man, starring Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman is phenomenal in this movie. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I actually watched the play of this movie as well. Um, I can't remember the geezer who played Dustin Hoffman's role, but he was so, so good. That play was fantastic. Can't wait for the theatres to open again so I can get back out and start going to watch some plays, man. Next we have... Is it, is it one you want? Where's the other one? All right, cool. Next one we have Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, I am a fan of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. He's not my favourite Spider-Man, however. That is Tobey Maguire. But I still enjoy these movies, and Spider-Man 3 is going to be off the fucking chain. Next, we have Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List, starring Rafe Fiennes and Liam Neeson. This movie is just... Uh, there's not much I need to say about this movie. If you haven't seen this one, uh, you need to watch it. It is one of the best movies ever made. It is a hard watch, but it is fantastic. Next, we have Senna, which is a documentary about Senna. Um, absolutely fantastic. Again, a real eye-opener into the Brazilian motor racing legend. Next, we have Johnny Depp in Secret Window, one of the most underrated movies of all time. It is fantastic. Johnny Depp was my favourite actor for a period of time, and I literally bought everything the geezer was in, um, and this is one of his best movies. Next, we have Superbad, one of the best comedies ever made, starring Jonah Hill, Michael Cera, Christopher Mintz Plass. This movie is fantastic. Someone the other day said that book smart is better than super bad. You are not book smart for thinking you know what you're talking about when it comes to super bad. So, yeah. next we have Frank Miller's, well, Frank Miller's Sin City. This is the Zack Snyder movie. Um, this is, no, it's not Zack Snyder, is it? Sorry, I'm losing my mind here. It's really, really annoying me. No, it's, it's Frank Miller, it is. Sorry, really, really sorry. Frank Miller's Sin City, fantastic. 
Next we have the the first Spider-Man movie with Tom Holland, um, Homecoming. This is a really thoroughly enjoyable movie for me. The better of the two when it comes to the Spider-Man movies with Tom Holland. Next we have Suicide Squad, which is one of the worst movies in the DC, worst comic book movies ever. But I love Margot Robbie's performance and I don't hate this movie as much as everyone else. The storyline is garbage, I understand that. Visually, it's, it's not it's not great, but some of the characters I really love. I thought Will Smith was good as Deadshot, um, Jai Courtney as Boomerang was a highlight for me, and Harley Quinn is just oh, amazing. Next we have Sonic. Sonic? My elocution is terrible, sorry. Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie which just came out last year it is a, such an improvement from what i thought was going to come out with the sonic um animation when it first came out that picture do you remember how bad that looked but no great great adaption for sure sonic the hedgehog next we have scott pilgrim vs the world the edgar wright movie visually this is amazing I am a huge, huge fan of this, and honestly, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead is so gorgeous in this movie, and the never, the always changing hairstyle is quality. Next, sorry, the last batch, or the last part of this batch is the complete series of The Sopranos. Sopranos is a, for me, top three movie series of all time and i had to have the series in the collection bear with me a second i'm just gonna go and get another batch and we're back the first movie of the second batch is sexy beast sexy beast is one of the best british movies ever made one of the most underseen movies ever made and ben kingsley is so good in this movie it is unbelievable how good he is jonathan glazer directed the movie and honestly this is just such a banger sexy beast next we have street dance 3d which again really know what this is doing in my collection i'm probably going to throw it in the bin i have no intention to ever watch that the next movie we have is Will Ferrell and John C. Riley in Step Brothers. Step Brothers is such a hilarious comedy. It's one of the most quotable comedies for me. Um, this and Pineapple Express are my two favourite kind of like American comedies, to be perfectly honest. I am much more a fan of the British comedies. However, Step Brothers is one of the funniest ones that I've seen for sure. Next we have Straight Out of Compton, which is the NWA um, biopic. This is a decent biopic. Is it one of the best? No, but still huge fan of NWA, huge fan of Dr. Dre, Easy e Ice Cube, Ren and Yella. So had to have that in the collection, of course. Next we have The Proposal starring Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds. Again, haven't seen this movie before. No, I have seen it. It's a rental copy. I don't know where this came from. I don't know where this came from. Basically, she needs to get married, otherwise she's going to be deported. And her... I think assistant? Brian Reynolds plays. Anyway, next movie. Next movie we have is Split. Split is the second movie from M. Night Shyamalan, which stars James McAvoy in one of his best performances. Anna Taylor-Joy is also in this. Anna Taylor-Joy, my favourite young actress working today. When I go to HMV, I have a few of her movies I need to pick up for sure. The one I'm definitely not buying, though, is that... Um, X-Men movie she was in. She was fantastic, the only saving grace of the movie, but wow, was that garbage. Next we have Speed, starring Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. Um, this is just a fantastic movie. The sequels are pretty terrible, however, this is awesome. 
really enjoyable movie. Keanu Reeves, man, that guy has been in some absolute bangers. Next, we have one of my top 10 movies of all time, Guy Ritchie's Snatch. Benicio Del Toro, Vinnie Jones, Brad Pitt, Jason Statham, all about a diamond, um, all about the British underworld. This is just such a good movie. I don't know anyone who hasn't seen Snatch, but if you haven't seen Snatch, if you have not seen Snatch, please do yourself a favor and go and watch it. Because again, it's one of the best British movies ever made. And it's one of my favorite movies also. Next we have the, so the, the, I can say the sometimes when there's no the in the title. So apologies if there's a title that I've said the on and there's no the actually in the title. So Silver Linings Playbook starring Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence, Robert De Niro, Jackie Weaver and Chris Tucker. It's a really good movie. I really like the performances in the movie. People don't like Jennifer Lawrence and it is insane. It is insane. Well, one thing that I didn't like, however, is Sausage Party. I bought this movie expecting a, a laugh, and I did not laugh at all. Appalling movie, appalling movie. Again, one that I'm probably going to get rid of. Take you to the Space Jam. Next, we have Space Jam, starring MJ, the second greatest basketball player of all time, behind the start of Space Jam 2, Space Jam 2. LeBron, the King, James. And no, I'm not a Lakers fan or a Cavs fan. New York Knicks to the day I die. Next we have Delis Villeneuve's Cesario. Fantastic movie starring Benicio Del Toro, Emily Blunt and Josh Brolin. Emily Blunt is one of my favorite actresses. Benicio Del Toro is one of my favorite actors. Delis Villeneuve, Denis Villeneuve is one of my favourite directors and this movie is just awesome on so many levels. Next we have Saving Private Ryan which before Dunkirk came into existence was my favourite war movie. It's top three, this and Full Metal Jacket and Dunkirk are my three favourites. But we'll get to that on another day, I want to go through top ten of each genre and one day I will do it, but I just don't feel like doing it at the moment. I still feel like there's so many movies I have to watch before even thinking about making a video like that. Next we have The Sweeney, starring Ray Winston and Plan B. Goes by the name Ben Drew. Plan B, for me, is a much better rapper than he is an actor. Um, and I wish he could go back. If you don't know about Charmaine De La Rosa, get to know, yeah? The next movie we have is Startup, starring Ben Mendelsohn and Jack O'Connell. Jack O'Connell, sick, sick actor. Big, big fan. Next we have Spider-Man 3. So I was saying earlier that Andrew, not Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire is my favourite Spider-Man. And for some reason, the only Spider-Man movie of his I have in my collection is the worst of the bunch. Don't really know what's happened there. Uh, okay, so the next movie we have is Short Term 12. If you have not seen Short Term 12, boy oh boy, you're missing out. A lot of these people have turned out to be some serious heavy hitters. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield's in it, Rami Malek's in it, um, what's the, the girl from Booksmart is in it, I can't remember her name. Um, who else is in it? There's a few more people. Caitlin Denver's at Davis at Deva 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 is her name. She is awesome, and also Stephanie Beatrix, the lady from Brooklyn Nine Nine, is also in it. Next, we have DC's Shazam, starring Zachary Levy as Shazam. This movie was fun. I thoroughly enjoyed this one, and. I'm so intrigued to see that Black Adam movie with The Rock. Don't really know how they're going to go and do that, but the Shazam movie was awesome. Next, we have Jake Gyllenhaal in Southport with Rachel McAdams, who, for me, is one of the most versatile actors ever. Rachel McAdams, she's just so good. It's a really good movie. 
Um, it's not the best movie, but it's an enjoyable movie for sure. I'm a fan of any movie, uh, like boxing movies, martial arts movies, that's a bit of me. Um, I do like some violence. Next we have Denzel Washington and Ryan Reynolds in Safe House. This is a mediocre, at best, action flick. Um, very run-of-the-mill, basic action movie. Um, it is exactly what you'd expect it to be. Next we have Al Pacino in Scarface. Scarface, say hello to my little friend. Brian Del Palma, one of my favorite directors. Scarface. Scarface needs a rewatch. I think this may be one of my most rewatched movies of all time. Huge, huge Scarface fan, as most people are that grow up like I grow up. Next, we have David Fincher's Seven Gluttony, Greed, Sloth, Envy, Wrath, Pride, and Lust. Seven Deadly Sins, Seven Ways to Die. What's in the box? Sick, sick movie. Next we have Shame, which one of Fassbender's best performances, Kerry Mulligan's also in this. Steve McQueen, who also directed the movie Hunger, which is just, this geezer. Steve McQueen is an absolute beast, absolute beast. Next we have Angelina Jolie in Salt, it is a kind of Jason Bourne, James Bond type movie. Actually thoroughly enjoyable, that one. Angelina Jolie is an absolute 10 out of 10, and any movie she's in is automatically okay in these eyes. Next, we have Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. This, for me, was a amazing movie on first watch, because the twist is just so sick. It doesn't hold up that well on rewatches, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, and now we have, sorry, move these around a bit. Sherlock Holmes and Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, the two Robert Downey Jr. movies. Thoroughly enjoyed those, a great take on Sherlock Holmes. I love when they're breaking down what he's going to do in slow motion, and then boom, 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 shows you exactly what he does. Pretty, pretty sick. Next, we have Star Wars. The complete series. This was before I had these. Um, this is episode one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is episode seven, eight, and nine. I am one of the bunch that actually enjoys the sequel trilogy. I have felt like all the Star Wars movies, but Empire Strikes Back is easily the best Star Wars movie, and there's no debate about it. And also, The Last Jedi. I also like The Last Jedi. I thought Rian Johnson done a fantastic job, and some of y'all are just haters, man. You're just haters. Now we're going to get another bunch. Next, we have Troy, which is all about the Battle of Troy, starring Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt in this, that geezer, man. That's the reason I go to the gym, to try and one day, maybe, just maybe, look anything like that. Next, we have The King's Speech, starring Helena Bonham Carter, Colin Firth. This is all about um, King George and his stutter that he had. Um, yeah, this movie got a lot more love than it deserved, to be honest. It's good, but it's not that good. You've got major, major award love, and uh, it's, it's just not that good. The Hateful Eight. Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight, which is his eighth movie. Um, this features a great ensemble cast. It, for me, is one of the most... I don't know, there's just something about this movie I love. Maybe it's the fact it was shot in 70mm, and it always feels like everybody's in shot. 
it felt very much like a stage play to me and I'm a huge fan of just performance and stage plays and I love this movie I love it much more than a lot of people do and it's just such great just keeping an eye on every you can watch that movie multiple times and you can keep an eye on a different person every single time and it completely enhances your idea of what's going on in the movie it's just fantastic from Tarantino next we have Four Ragnarok which is the third Four movie in the MCU and ladies and gentlemen this is indeed my least favourite MCU movie it's a lot of colours, it's a lot of flash, but it just doesn't have the substance for me. I'm not a fan. The next movie we have is Ted 2, starring Mark Wahlberg and the talking bear, which is the geezer that does uh, Family Guy, Seth MacFarlane. Then we have Train Spotting, the ultimate collector's edition. Danny Boyle's movie Train Spotting is an English legendary movie. This is touted by most people as being the best British movie of all time. Um, fantastic, fantastic movie. Danny Boyle, what a director, what a director. Next we have The Dark Knight, which is one of my top 10 movies of all time. No, I don't think it is actually. It's one of my, it's such a clouded thing with me when it comes to the Dark Knight because the cinematic experience I had when I first watched it was just the best I've ever had in a cinema and Heath Ledger's performance is so amazing but there are so many things in it I didn't like so there's one scene you know when they're transporting uh, Commissioner Gordon and the the um, the bus is alight or whatever it is is alight and they go down into the underpass. They could have just slowed down and drove around it. It's so annoying. The next movie we have is The Dark Knight Rises, which is the sequel to The Dark Knight. Of course, Heath Ledger's passing had a big effect on that movie and The Dark Knight Rises gets worse every time I watch it. And I don't really want that to be the case. I really want that to be the case. Next, we have The Town, starring Ben Affleck. Um, who else is in this again? Rebecca Hall, John Hamm, Jeremy Renner, and Blake Lively. John, not John Hamm, Jeremy Renner and Ben Affleck have a scene in this movie which is just so sick. And when it's just the epitome of friendship, like, I'm in trouble, I need your help. I can't tell you what's going to happen. I can't tell you what we're going to do, but... Are you in? Whose car are we taking? Love that shit. Next we have Two Lovers, a movie by James Gray, which I haven't seen yet. I will check it out. Then we have Four, the first movie with Chris Hemsworth as the, the Greek god. As Four... This is a sick still book, man. I do love the still books. I do really love them. I think they're really great. Then we have For the Dark World, which is the second least favorite movie. Yeah. So it's crazy because I actually really love the first four movie, but the Dark World and Ragnarok are two of the worst, if not the two worst movies from the MCU. Next we have The Theory of Everything starring Eddie Redmayne and Felicity Jones. This was just such an amazing movie um, and is all about Stephen Hawking. It is a great movie with such an amazing, outstanding, beautiful performance from Eddie Redmayne. Um, really, really solid. Next we have The 40 Year Old Virgin which is another American comedy that I don't really like. That I, blah, 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 blah. Another American comedy that I really like, starring Steve Carell. The scene where he's getting waxed is just so fucking funny. Next, we have Will Ferrell in Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. Will Ferrell and 
John C. Riley have some amazing chemistry, and this movie has it all on full display. If you don't chew Big Red, then fuck you. <laughs> it's such a sick movie. Next, we have The Color of Money, starring Paul Newman and Tom Cruise. Great, great movie. Next, we have The Bourne Legacy, which is the fourth movie from the Bourne series. I don't really have the other three in my collection, so I don't really know why I have The Bourne Legacy, but I do, and it is what it is. Next, we have, this is hilarious, this is hilarious, Tropic Thunder. Robert Downey Jr. is so good in this movie, and this movie could never be made today it's just it would it would never get made and that's such a shame because it is just such an amazing movie it is so good and tom cruise oh god his scene in that movie is insane now we have sorry 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 toy story one Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, and Toy Story 4. I rank the Toy Story movies as follows. 1, 2, 3, 4, pretty simple, done, dusted, next one please. This is the end, which Recently, I've learned that this movie was pretty much 90% improvised, um, which probably would have been an insane, frustrating movie to film. Um, but it is a funny movie, nevertheless. Features pretty much every comedic actor within that American comedy circle. Next, we have Terminator Salvation, starring Christian Bell and Sam Worthington. Okay, it's not the best, it's not the worst. Now, one of the best one two punch combo movies ever. This Indonesian movie, The Raid and The Raid 2, is just so, so sick. The fight scenes in these two movies are just second to none. Ludicrously good. Ludicrously good. If you haven't seen The Raid and The Raid 2, please go and watch them. And if you like martial arts movies, Please go and watch them. Next we have God the Godfather supplements. That's just some additional features. The Godfather Part Three, the Godfather Part Two, and the Godfather. The Godfather One is just one of the best movies ever made. The Godfather Part Two is one of the best movies ever made. The Godfather Part 3 is actually not bad, but compared to how sick the first two are, it gets such a bad rep. So, the Godfather trilogy, for me personally, is the best trilogy of all time. And I don't think it's debatable. I honestly don't. The Lord of the Rings has a shout. It definitely has a shout. But for me, the Godfather 1 and 2... Al Pacino is just insane in the movies. Robert De Niro in the second one is so good. And then you're talking about Marlon Brando in the first one with one of the best performances you'll ever see. Marlon Brando is my second favourite actor. And he's just so, so good. Then we have the three Transformer movies with Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox. Um, Transformers, Transformers, Dark of the Moon and Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. I like the Transformer movies. I take them with a pinch of salt. I don't expect to see Oscar award winning movies every time I go to the cinema or every time I watch a film. But it's nice to see movies I enjoy and the Transformer movies are definitely ones that I enjoy. Nice to go there and just kind of turn off, switch off for a minute and just watch absolute carnage in front of you. And that's what the Transformer movies do for me. That's the end of part four. I'll be back very soon with the final part, part five. As always, I'm Rio. Thank you for watching. Peace out.